I think we've arrived at that time of the year where it's that overwhelming feeling of chaos, disaster, and feeling extremely far behind <laughs> on everything. Um, I think this is this is where we're at right now um, here in my house. Disaster everywhere. I mean, you do seeds starting on one end of the table and income tax on the other end of the table and just go back and forth throughout the day. That seems like a legit plan, right? Leave all of your processing stuff out because as soon as that freeze dryer is done, you have so many more batches to put in like this. One case of mushrooms. Don't worry, there's more. A second case of mushrooms and there's already one case in the freeze dryer. Oh boy. And let's talk about these eggs. What do I do with them? And, and these eggs, they're gonna be hatching in like, in, in just over a week. And I have to get the brooder and find a spot in here to put them. And my shelving is empty for my seed starting because I have been busy with other things. The seedlings, which I need to add more light because they're starting to get leggy and I need to water them. some more grow lights because my plants need to start getting moved around and um, I just don't have enough light for them to not get laggy. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So I, I've added a couple lights in here so I can kind of configure this a little bit better. These They're doing much better even though they could be closer to the light. These ones are yarrow that I started from seed a few weeks ago. They're looking really good. They have a really nice root system. They're air pruning, very, very healthy, um, stuff like that. Um, but there's some of them that could definitely become or be moved closer up so they don't get leggy and get more balanced, even light. Look at these. I am really proud of this. I'm proud of myself to be able to grow white sage and it smells so good. I'm really happy. It's velvety. Um, I see a couple of them did not survive the move over here. It was about half germination, which was okay because I bought the seeds from a person on Etsy and who knows how old they were. It was just a private person. Um, but yeah, my Lizzie's, they need to get more organized a little bit better. They're doing okay, I guess. 
but they just I need to I need to get everything more balanced with more lights. So I did order some from Amazon and I'm gonna go pick them up. I do have more lights, but they're pink and they really hurt my eyes. I don't like them in the living room and I need to add more of these lights into the living room, um, grow racks. And then I'm gonna swap these ones out with the pink ones so that I can just use the pink ones in here where I'm not gonna be in here and it'll be bothering my eyes. Cause even through the, through the curtain, it still bothers me. So and I have a whole bunch of seeds to start. These are, um, these are really leggy. These are carnations and they look horrible. I need to get these either potted up and dealt with, get them happy, happy underneath some decent lighting. So that's my plan. The, the freeze dryer has, I think, another hour on it. And then I can do another batch of mushrooms, deal with my mess over there, get seeds starting. I have some seeds soaking that need to be sown today. And then I have this, there's a case of bacon. I ordered a bulk order in from Callahoo. So I have two cases of bacon. I thawed one out and I'm going to make these packages smaller and I'm gonna cook some to freeze for kind of convenience food. So I need to get that done today and I get two cases of mushrooms dealt with and I have to do something with the pumpkins because I have, the pumpkins are on my grow shelf um, that I use for seedlings. I need to get those dealt with um, I'll have to probably move them since the freeze dryer is going to be full for a few days dealing with mushrooms, but um, there's a whole bunch of things to kind of do. I would love to show you um, what I ordered on my bulk order when I get back from town. So hopefully that'll all work. I got to go get my grow lights, get the mail and go pick up some dog food and then I'll be right back and get to work. We had some terrible snow or uh, wind storms and I'm going to show you this. This is crazy. snowdrifts would be well over my head in height. I would be like buried like several feet below. There are really massive drifts. Crazy. We don't usually get that high of winds like that but uh, it's pretty neat to see how it sculpts the snow. This is my road going to my house. They push the snow back so they're expecting to get some runoff coming soon since they bladed the snow back off the road. I love going to the post office and getting more seeds. I like this company. I, um, I haven't grown, like actually sewn anything um, from them yet because I ordered my, sun, my teddy bear sunflowers from them, but I've seen these on their website and I'm really curious. I have to start these Bells of Ireland today. Um, these are really hard to, to get started to germinate. So I'm gonna pop them in the fridge on a wet paper towel for like a week. And then I'm gonna throw them on a heat mat and just watch them. And as they start to sprout, I'll just transfer them into a cell block. Um, that's what Nicole on Flower Hill Farm does. She has a really cute little video um, showing and demonstrating this. And I've seen it the other day. So I'm gonna give that, that method a shot because it's getting really late in the season for me to start these. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. So cute. My florist will be really happy with these, I think.
just set a reminder on my phone to check that in like seven days and then put them on the heat mat. But I have to remind myself because I'm totally gonna forget. So let's go over my bulk food order. I bought 44 pounds of sliced bacon. It was $134. A case of 48 cans of evaporated milk, $119.30. One case of coconut milk, which was 12 to a case, I paid $21.55. It's not the good stuff, but it'll do. Chaz has been really into making things with Eagle brand condensed milk and uh, like pies and stuff like that. So I'm encouraging him as much as possible. I could get a case of this stuff. Uh, 24 uh, cans of it was $99.13, which is half the price of what I would pay here. An 11 pound box of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. It was $41.95. This is the second case of bacon that I got. We already talk, talked about that. I got 17.6 pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. It's seasoned, and I paid $110 for two case, the, the two cases of that. I also bought some ginger beef. This stuff is kind of a favorite of ours. It's a 10-pound box um, with sauce packets, um, and I paid $54.73 for that. Beef jerky was about two and a half pounds and I paid 70 bucks for five packages of jerky. I also ordered six rings of garlic sausage and that was $39.60 for those. This is in Canadian dollars, by the way. I bought two bags of wild berry mix, which was 11 pounds and um, it was $41.30 for that. Chaz really likes these in his smoothies. I also picked up a wild blueberry 1 kg bag, um, so a five and 5.6 pounds of wild blueberries, and um, that was $13.30, which is really cheap compared to what we can get locally. I bought 20 pounds of cheese, Armstrong marble cheese, and uh, so they come in four two and a half kg blocks. Um, or two and a quarter kg blocks. And it was $165 for a case. I bought mozzarella, shredded mozzarella. This is pizza matza. So there's four bags. It's 11, um, or just about 12 pounds. And I paid $152 for the case of four bags. I got five and a half pounds, about just over five and a half pounds of um, grated Parmesan cheese and I paid $75.39. I decided I better put some in the fridge and throw the rest of it in the freezer um, so that we can have some Parmesan again. Yay! So while I went to take the bag to the freezer, I thought I would check the mushrooms to see how they're doing. So let's give them a check. So one of the things to test when the the round comes to a uh, complete and it, it alarms that it's done, I like to feel inside the mushrooms or whatever I'm freeze drying and see if there's any, if it's cool. And if it's cool at all, that means there's moisture in it. Um, if you, It shouldn't have any temperature at all if it's completely dry. So I just added two more hours of dry time on this and I went and did something else while this did a little bit more of a cycle which two hours was just perfect and it was completely dry after after it ran that little bit extra but there was a lot of stuff in there i definitely filled it a little too full okay i'm gonna work on these mushrooms while um the freeze dryer is finishing up with the last batch. So I'm gonna chop these into little bits. I'm gonna wash them and stuff first. Um, and then I'm gonna chop them into little bits, into little cubes and get them ready for the freeze dryer. This is definitely not a one-handed job, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. I would normally not run water on these, but I have a very busy day today. I would usually just wipe them with a wet, damp cloth, but um, basically I'm just kind of one by one going in and cleaning them off and putting them there. 
I don't like running the water like this, but um, I'm gonna do it more efficiently with two hands. I just wanted to show you how I clean off my mushrooms. I got these guys washed up. I'm just going to get these processed. I'll show you how I do it to prepare them for in the freeze dryer or dehydrating. Um, if you don't have a freeze dryer, I used to do this in the dehydrator. Um, it's just, I like, I prefer it in the freeze dryer, but these are a five pound box. It was just slightly over a five pounds, five pounds in this box and five pounds fits perfectly in a medium sized freeze dryer. If I was doing this in my dehydrator, I would need to run it like three times with because it there's too much here for it to handle three or four times. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get these chopped up. So that one colander full, heaping full, chopped up, gave me two 9 by 13 cake pans uh, or baking dishes for um, to freeze dry. And I like this size. Um, I can reconstitute them and use them in stir fries or just throw them into casseroles. Or um, they're just perfect for making cream of mushroom soup. I like this size of them. I could have probably even chopped them a little bit finer. I have a smaller thing, but I like this size because then I just, it's quite uniform. If I need them smaller, I just smash them while they're dry um, and stuff. So I'm going to go get the other ones and swap these out. Hopefully the other ones are dry and then we can get these ones in the freeze dryer before they start getting mushy since I did put, wash them with water. I still have this part case in left and then there's a whole uh, about seven pounds left in the fridge to do so so it definitely seems a little bit excessive to have this many mushrooms and and such but um the reason this um the reason i'm doing a batch process this way is because in our local grocery store what i was actually spending was about six dollars per week on mushrooms mushrooms is a they're a staple in this house it's, we we really use a lot of um, but they're very expensive and sometimes we don't have very good quality here um, locally. Sometimes they're, you know, just, they're just not available, especially stuffer sized ones, um, which the way I'm processing, it doesn't really matter if they're stuffer sized, but I wanted to give you the numbers of why this justifies for me to do this and why I'm doing it this way. So um, basically what I evaluate, I was spending somewhere between 250 to $280 a year on mushrooms, literally. Like literally, it was very expensive when you add it all up throughout the year of what our grocery budget was and how much we're actually spending on just mushrooms. So the way I freeze dry it and when I bought four cases, so four cases cost me 50, $56. Um, for all four cases and it was free shipping here because I bought a bulk order of all different things. I just had to, we had to get it picked up or we had to pick it up. But, and and then of course I have to like process it in a hurry, like get it done because they, these won't keep. So um, it's work on my part, but this, these mushrooms, this amount of mushrooms, there are uh, 20 pounds of mushrooms that I'm processing and this will keep, this will last us at least the whole year. 
um, just because it's, you know, we're not gonna, we don't have to use them up. Uh, like when you buy a tray of mushrooms from the store to get a better deal, you buy the bigger tray and then you have to use them and like th there's more, it's not efficient that way. This definitely is a more efficient way because there's not any waste. I'm going to use exactly the amount I need and the rest don't get constituted. They're going to stay on the shelf and it'll be, we'll, we'll use less, um, because of the way that they're shelf stable and because of the way they're processed, we don't have to use them up and um, it'll just stretch a lot further. And you know, the cost of $56 to actually purchase these cases and it costs about $10 to process them in running the freeze dryer for all of these batches. So realistically, um, it costs about 65, 65 or $70, I would say in that ballpark to process and to buy all of these mushrooms for the entire year. So I will not buy mushrooms probably until uh, November, 2022. Um, and it is, you know, because I want to process for the, for the next season, um, but we'll probably have a surplus of mushrooms. The last time I bought mushrooms was in October. Um, I bought one case instead of four, and I still have these, these ones here. You see me use a lot of them in the cooking. These are mixed with um, squash, but um, I still have mushrooms left. I have packets left of those too. So um, yeah, this is why it's a good it's a good investment for me to make now and get it done before we get into the full swing of gardening where I'm preserving other stuff. This is me filling up my pantry again um, and preserving so that I have stock that um, is gonna save me money in the long run. I just pulled that first batch of mushrooms out of the freeze dryer and I'm just going to put them into some quartz since I don't have any mylar bags that I can find right now. Thanks for hanging out with me today while I was doing my little random jobs. I appreciate you um, hanging out with me while I get my stuff done. Um, I hope you were inspired and I hope you enjoyed. Much love, catch you next time.